chapter 25. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they take for me an offering. Of every man whose heart makes him willing, you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take of them, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and seal skin and acacia wood, oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, oink stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. According to all that I show you, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the furniture thereof, even so shall you make it. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood, two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold. Within and without shall you overlay it. And shall make upon it a crown of gold round about. And you shall cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four feet thereof, and two rings shall be on the one side of it, and two rings on the other side of it. And you shall make staves of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold. And you shall put the staves into the rings on the sides of the ark, wherewith to bear the ark. The staves shall be in the rings of the ark, they shall not be taken from it. And you shall put in the ark the testimony which I shall give you. And you shall make an ark cover of pure gold. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof. And you shall make two cherubim of gold of beaten work, shall you make them at the two ends of the ark cover. And make one cherub at the one end, and one cherub at the other end of the one piece with the ark cover shall you make the cheddar beam of the two ends thereof. And the cheddar beam shall spread out their wings on high, screening the ark cover with their wings, with their faces one to another. Toward the ark cover shall the faces of the cheddar beam be. And you shall put the ark cover above upon the ark, and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you, from above the ark cover, from between the two cheddar beam, which are upon the ark of the testimony, of all things which I will give you in commandment unto the children of Israel. And you shall make a table of acacia wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. And you shall overlay it with pure gold, and make thereto a crown of gold round about, and you shall make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about, and you shall make a golden crown to be the border thereof round about. And you shall make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are in the four feet thereof. Close by the border shall the rings be, for places for the staves to bear the table. And you shall make the staves of acacia wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be borne with them. And you shall make the dishes thereof, and the pans thereof, and the jars thereof, and the bowls thereof, wherewith to pour out. Of pure gold shall you make them, and you shall set upon the table showbread before me always. And you shall make a candlestick of pure gold. Of beaten work shall the candlestick be made, even its base, and its shaft, its cups, its knobs, and its flowers, shall be of one piece with it. And there shall be six branches going out of the sides thereof, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side thereof, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. Three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch, a knob and a flower, and in three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch, a knob and a flower. So for the six branches going out of the candlestick, and in the candlestick, four cups made like almond blossoms, the knops thereof and the flowers thereof. A knop under two branches of the, the one piece with it, and a knop under two branches of the one piece with it, and a knop under two branches of one piece with it, for the six branches going out of the candlestick. 
their knops and their branches shall be of one piece with it, the whole of it one beaten work of pure gold. And you shall make the lamps thereof seven, and they shall light the lamps thereof to give light over against it. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. Of a talent of pure gold shall it be made with all the vessels. And see that you make them after their pattern, which is being shown you in the mount. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, we are continuing from the uh, fourth chapter of, or the 24th chapter of Exodus. Uh, the Lord has spoke to Moses. He has called the elders up before them. He, and Moses has went back. He's sealed the deal, so to speak, with the with the uh, with the blood that was offered, and that which was sprinkled against the altar, kind of signature, signing the the contract, so to speak. Uh, and he has went back and uh, went up into the mount uh, to speak to the Lord, and from a distance we get different perspectives here of this of uh, the. Uh, the perspective, or maybe the appearance of God becomes different to several mud and different people. Uh, to the multitude, to the multitude, we see that the Lord appeared as a, a flaming fire devouring the mountain, kind of like a judgment, so to speak, in the world. Uh, to the, the elders, now that's those that was in charge, those that was kind of appointed to make people understand and teach them the law and give them some understanding for themselves. Uh, we'll find it's easier to uh, give everybody a little understanding whereby they can become responsible for themselves, and it takes off the burden from one having to be responsible for everybody. But anyway, the... Um, they they saw the Lord as this uh, a mighty king who was uh, giving them the law, and, uh, and they was their, his servant. They was humbled before him, uh, we'll but see. But Moses had a different perspective altogether. He was uh, trying to make a deal uh, between the Lord and, and the children of Israel, those that contend with the mighty one. They struggled. They had some adversity of life. and He was trying to make a little deal so to speak, an agreement. It's a simple agreement where one can uh, the have have some understanding and, and some responsibility for their self and some authority for their self. We'll find that the Lord give everybody a little authority in the beginning. And as long as you maintain that authority, stay in your integrity, as we learned from Job, the Lord's going to stand behind you. But anyway, it's a simple contract to follow some common sense laws and some common sense understanding that God put in everybody's heart from the beginning. There's no big secret uh, what we should all be doing. But we're going to pick it up here. Moses is in the mountain. The Lord's still speaking with him. And verse 1, the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, So Hashem, once again, is going to continue to speak with the one that's drawn out, this one he has saved, too. Speak unto the children of Israel that they take for me an offering of every man whose heart makes him willing. You shall take my offering. Now speak unto the children of Israel. That's those, all those that come forth from uh, Yaakov, Israel, the one who contended with the mighty one. And man as well, we'll see. That take, take for me an offering to give me, to give me a gift. Give me a little something uh, 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 out of their own heart, we'll see, from every man whose heart makes him willing. And that's that one who's willing, uh, willing to serve the Lord, willing to give him, give him something, return to him something that really belongs to him anyway. He give you everything you've got. We'll see when you was born in the world, all you had was the hide that covers your bones. But... To return to him something, we'll see. To tell the Lord thanks. Three, and this is the offering which you shall take of them. Gold and silver and brass. Four, and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and, and fine linen and goat's hair. 
Five, and ram skins dyed red, and seal skins and acacia wood. Six, oil for the light, spices for the anointing, and oil for the sweet incense. Seven, oink stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. So these are the gifts one can uh, bring the Lord. We'll see. And they go from verse 3 down to verse 7. Uh, gold. Gold is uh, really that which belongs to the Lord anyway. Everything belongs to God. But this is going to be the, the... That stands for the pureness, you might say, in a sense of uh, easy um, to uh, work. In a, of those things that are going to be rigid in life, these metals and this silver, uh, or or these things, uh, you might say well, it's it's the law. It always is, and the silver and this and brass. Silver is going to be that which comes when they used to mine that. It, it come off as a dross from gold, the silver and the brass. Brass is a mixture here. This word should be copper. Uh, these were of the first. Uh, workable metals and stuff that they used. Um, the, the the silver is that which has been tried from the fire. It's come out. Uh, it come off as dross in the beginning. It was separated. It was took and put to the side, and we'll find out. It was refined further, and then the from it we'll find out come off some dross, and they would use this for brass and then. In a sense, it was a, a, or they would use this for copper, and then since it uh, had other things mixed in it as well. Uh, so we get this, the, the things are being, uh, it's put in a fire, and it's run through a process. Of course, the gold's coming off first, and that's the best of it. That's the, that's got the most uh, weight. It was the easiest thing to get. Then the silver will come off, and then we'll find out the copper. So it, it's like it's shedding. It's shedding off as it gets uh, down to that which is going to be used for and blue, and purple, and scarlet, and fine linen, and goats are blue. Uh, blue is... Blue is kind of a color that, that, in a sense, represents the light in a understanding. Um, and, uh, and the blue being the, like the purest light, that which is uh, more of a desired thing. The purple uh, is that of a kind of like a royal color. And the scarlet would what we would get when we would mix the two together. Fine linen, uh, we'll find out. This, the, these would be used, these colors would be used to dye this fine linen and the goat's hair. The fine linen is that which is, is work. It's a fine work. The, uh, you might say the threads are very close together. The, and the goat's hair um, would be what these, some of these fine linens would be made out of. Five ram skins dyed red and seal skins or the acacia wood. So we got these ram skins and that's just the skin of the rams. The rams always that which is exalts itself over the uh, herd, as we'll find out. They're dyed red because uh, they, uh, in a sense, um, uh, that's. Uh, a similitude of what they do. These seal skins and acacia wood. We'll find out the seal skins are going to be something that's used for a, a roof or a covering. Uh, acacia wood uh, is going to be, it's, uh, that word is shital, and it is a shetum tree. Uh, and what it means is these, these uh, woods, not necessarily the tree, but uh, the the woods, it's uh, probably from the acacia. We'll find out. Uh, it uh, most likely something from having it has thorns on it, or that which pierces. And we'll find out that uh, these it would be cleaned and skinned down and and made. Uh, wood we might. Uh, commonly relate to that today would be a a locust tree. Six 
oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the sweet incense. Oil uh, for the light, as we'll find out. Uh, uh, the Lord's telling what you need before he even tells you what you're going to have. You're going, uh, this oil for the light, that's uh, that which burns. Uh, gives off the light, gives off some understanding, and uh, it's gonna has a representation. All these things have a representation that may require, uh, that will require a lot of meditation to, and we can sit and think about them for many hours and and uh, come up with uh, a a a relative. Um, um, thing for each one like these spices for the anointing oil uh, something to, and it's going to be to give it a little scent now that anointing oil uh, that's what's used to anoint with or or to to uh, give the knowledge to or give that understanding to and it's for sweet incense to these spices and spices is something to spices some gives it a little scent uh, it's that sweet odor you know the as a it's a a pleasant it's acceptable it's seven oinks stones and stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate oink stones precious stones these stones that are be set uh, we'll see there's very going to be various kinds of stones that are going to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate uh, the breastplate, we'll get the example of it. It's going to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, the ephod is a, it's like a girdle, you might say, that which wraps around. Uh, it, it wraps around, it can go over the shoulders, uh, kind of like a, a, a sh outer garment or a shoulder cape. So you know this, and it's and that's kind of what we're going to get is that it's it's that which wraps around, it goes over the shoulders, and it's a priestly garment, as we'll see when we get a little more into it. The Lord's actually given some uh, information here of some things that we you don't even have that's going to be acquired to to create these things or to make these things, and He's given Moses the um, overall. Uh, stuff that we're going to need to gather up these things you got to get together uh, and so that you can make uh, what the Lord requires and eight and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them and we'll find out these these skins these seal skins these ram skins dyed are going to be for curtains seal skins going to be to create a little roof over top of it the uh, acacia wood to build the posts and things and, and this coppers for sockets and these things all these things that sh will be needed uh, to make a sanctuary that's a place for the Lord to dwell a sanctuary is something that's set aside uh, we'll find out so he can dwell among the people and it was a little something you know we don't uh, we don't want the people to forget we'll find out when the Lord's sanctuary is not present in the earth, the people tend to forget. Nine, according to all that I show you, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the furniture thereof, even so shall you make it. And it's going to be according to uh, that I show you, or this pattern of the tabernacle, even as the Lord instructs, uh, shall it be made. The pattern of all the furniture thereof, even so shall you make it. So all the furniture, everything that's going to be in it, We'll, we'll see all these things as we go through what the Lord's going to require to be there. We're going to have the ark, a table, uh, a few lamps. There's not a lot. The Lord don't need a lot. Uh, well, in his tent, we'll find out. And that's what it is. It's a tent. It's a place that we're going to move around. Uh, you might say the Lord's, uh, uh, because they're, they're going to move around for a while, Ten. And they shall make an ark of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the height thereof. They shall make an ark of acacia wood. That's and that's ark is going to be a a basically just a box, so to speak. 
and uh, uh, the acacia wood as I've explained uh, uh, I give the reference to a locust tree and we'll find out the locust has the thorns it has that which is going to last it's known for its properties uh, of lasting two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and we can witness the a cubit is just simply a measurement a determined length that's going to be used uh, over and over uh, we can witness these lengths these measurements that are that are, and uh, going to be used over and over is half and a half so there's two cubits and a half is going to be the length that's it's determined uh, for it we can uh, a half is always a representation of an, a, de, uh, a measurement divided um, uh, the determinations or this it's well these these two measurements that are divided a cubit and a half will be the breast breadth thereof and it's going to be used uh, for a measurement and that which is divided a cubit and a half the height thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof and th that's going to be what it's used for and we'll see as to contain uh, something well basically it's a box 11 and you should overlay it with pure gold without and without should you overlay it and shall make it and make it a crown of gold round about overlay it with pure gold within and without inside and outside and to cover with that which basically belongs to God it's that first portion it's the best it's the good part of it you shall make a crown of gold that goes round about. A crown is a border, like the capital, you might say, uh, on a column. Uh, it's a decorative thing that goes around and uh, to kind of break up a a plain, uh, the plain box, as to serve for a lip as well for the lid. Uh, it goes all the way around it. Twelve. You shall cast four rings of gold for it. Put them on the four feet thereof, and two rings shall be on the one side of it, two rings on the other side of it. Twelve. You shall cast these four rings. Ring is simply something that goes around. It's a circular thing of gold, it, because it's of God. And once it's going to be put on each corner, it says feet here, I believe the King James Version says corner. The word is paham. Uh, Pa'am, it's, it's a, that's what it is, it's a corner, uh, it's, and anytime we have a corner, uh, we'll find out, it could be, even be used for a, uh, as a wheel, but here, it, it's a corner, and that's where it has two rings on one side, one on each corner, two rings on the other side, one on each corner. A ring, that's something that go, keep, it goes around, it continues. We'll find out the, um, uh, these, these circular rings on each corner. And uh, anytime we have a corner, that's where it turns. It's going to be a place to turn. And it represents a place to turn. Um, uh, you might say, uh, in a sense, to uh, because the Lord made it to turn. He caused it to turn. He gave the measurement of it. He decided the border of it, the length of it, the width and height thereof. That's where it turns, you might say. And that's what it represents, because in all places they turn, there's going to be a witness before the Lord, something that keeps going around. Maybe something from the past, these continuing things. 13, you shall make staves of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Staves here, these long staves, uh, it's a pole uh, in a sense. As we'll see, these are going to be used to, to carry. They're made of the same kind of wood, and they are overlaid with gold. A wood's a tree made from that which is chopped down. It's hewed out. It's, it's um, molded into... Um, uh, we'll find the see uh, that which is going to carry something. And they overlay it with gold, now which belongs to God anyway. Fourteen. And we'll find in the end is it's the law of God. Uh, 
you shall put the staves into the rings on the sides of the ark where with the bear of the ark you shall put the staves that's what's going to carry it uh these and the rings on the sides of the ark that's those things that go around at the corners where with the bear of the ark and that's what it's for it's to carry the ark it's to as a witness you might say 15 the staves shall be in the rings of the ark they shall not be taken from it and that's where they will remain in other words uh in those rings in those places that go around and around at each corner uh that which is used to bear we will find out bearing witness as well 15 the stave shall be in the rings of the ark they shall uh 16 16 and you shall put into the ark the testimony which i shall give you and we'll, and you shall put in the ark the testimony the testimony is as uh, the written word that's what it is as we'll find out there was 10 letters on it they represent 10 words uh, which the Lord spoke which represent the 10 laws which uh, are known as the commandments uh, of God uh, and we'll see these were spoke to all the people and then there was a further explanation as well so it's there's it, it's a it's a little and, and, and that a lot comes from and we'll see that's kind of what's growing 17 you shall make an ark cover of pure gold two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof and a cubit and a half the breadth thereof you shall make a cover and that's going to be a lid something to cover it up and it, it represents just that it, it keeps it inside it seals it uh, uh, and it's going to be those commandments, those that agreement. It's the contract itself. Uh, two cubits, and we can witness once again these measurements in a half, and, uh, because that's what the measurements were for to divide. They shall be the length. Uh, that's uh, its determinations, and a cubit and a half the breadth, and that's what it's going to uh, how it's going to be used as the measure to divide it's basically represents the law my friends uh, to make a long story short the whole thing and that's what it is this agreement that divides this agreement that separates it's, it's used for a witness to separate it it's the law that's been doing the separating from the beginning as soon as the lord spoke 18 and you shall make two cheddar beam of gold a beaten work shall you make them at the two ends of the ark cover. You shall make these two cheddar beam of gold. Two, well, we're going to get to witness these cheddar beam, and we've already actually witnessed them uh, of gold. That's because they was of God. These these that are of beaten work, they shall, shall you make them. And uh, that's because that's what they're made of. This what this is pounded out, this... In a sense, to hammer it out, to work it out, to shape it, give it some form, give it some appearance, to make it known. These at the two ends of the art cover, that which goes over and covers the testimony or the law that the Lord made you. And we're going to find out. We will get to witness uh, these two. One's going to be the priest. One's going to be the king. 19 make one cheddar at the one end of the chip and one cheddar at the other end of one piece with the ark shall you make the cheddar beam of the two ends thereof and make one cheddar that's uh, the that that's an angel in a sense a a, a image of one we'll find out this this angel this deputy a uh, one that was dispatched from god it's not god See, you don't worship the cherub on top of the uh, ark. Uh, neither one, the one at one end and the one at the other end. They're, they're equal, we'll find out, of one piece. They're made of one work with the ark cover, that which covers the lid, that which uh, seals the deal, which seals the law. And we'll see, that's what it was for. You shall make the cherubim of the two ends thereof so they're they're going to be equal they're going to be one in this uh equal 
uh, one at one end, one at the other end. These two will get have witnessed them too. They, one is the priest, one is the king. Twenty, and the cherubim shall spread out their wings on high, screening the ark cover with their wings, with their faces one to another toward the ark cover. Shut the faces of the cherubim be. And that's where the be these cherubim, these ones that represent the two deputies, the ones that was dispatched from the Lord. They shall spread out their wings on high. Their wings are the borders. These, um, uh, their their limits are toward the heavens. You might say towards that which was above them, screening the ark cover, covering the ark cover with their wings. And in a sense, uh, to screen it is to kind of uh, hide it a little bit in a sense uh, where they uh, uh, are guarding it to to guard it in a uh, uh, with their abilities you might say toward and their faces these things everything that they make plain or one towards another that means they have an agreement there's an agreement with them and they are toward the ark cover uh, shall their faces be and that is down in toward that which looking into the ark oh uh, that's where the law is my friends the law is within there and that's what they was the example of these two that look into the ark cover and the law that's within it we're going to see that's, that was the king that was the priest these two that the Lord cre had created to do just that for that purpose 21 you shall put the ark cover above upon the ark and in the ark you shall put the testimony that I shall give you you shall put the ark cover above upon the ark so it's the, it's the lid in the ark you shall put the testimony that I give you and it's the lid that means it covers it that tops it off and inside is going to be that testimony it's the copy of the law it's a copy of the contract written of course, by the Almighty Lord Himself, it's a work we did with His finger. Uh, not uh, just that small part, uh, just a small portion of the hand of the great work of God, which He's done. We'll find out in the end that um, He gave them that to watch over, seal it up, uh, to remind you, to call it to your remembrance from time to time. Um, should be pulled out and read every day. 22. And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the ark cover, from between the two cheddar beam which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give you in commandment unto the children of Israel. And there, that's where the Lord will meet you. Right there between the two cheddar beam. It's mercy. Oh, uh, it's a little something we'll find out. That was a little bit of the work of the Lord. And it's between them. It's in the middle. Somewhere, not too far to the left, not too far to the right. Somewhere in the middle. It's from between these two cheddar beams. Now, we can witness these, we can witness these two cheddar beams, these two deputies, you might say. They, they are a to symbolize the two deputies which were dispatched by the by the father to uh, look into these matters you might say and to give you some understanding to to guard the, the work of the Lord even that law that the Lord gave everybody from the beginning well something to make sure you you, you got the message of all things which I give you which I will give you in commandment. And that was the message of God, all these things which he gave you in commandment. That's the ten laws, my friend, of, of and don't listen to nobody else that says you don't have to keep the law of God because, you know, we'll go back to the Garden of Eden and we'll find out that's basically what Satan said when he told Eve, so what? God said. Uh, yeah, so what? God said. God said, keep the law. 23 and you shall make a table of acacia wood two cubits shall be the length thereof and a cubit the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof 20 and you shall make a table 
a table we'll find out is just something that's flat something that's going to be used to hold to sit something on it's where the show bread will be set this table of acacia wood it's made out of the same kind of wood it's a wood that lasts it's a wood that's going to be around for a while so it was chopped down hewed down had a purpose from the beginning these two cubits will witness these measurements uh, that shall be the length thereof a cubit and the breadth thereof and a cubit and a half the height thereof because that's what it's determined that's what it's going to be used for um, it is a measurement that will divide 24 and you shall overlay it with pure gold and make thereto a crown of gold round about you will overlay it with pure gold cover it uh, with that which belongs to God uh, in a sense to, it is to represent the law uh, and make thereto a crown of gold round about a crown once again it's going to have a little border that goes around it uh, to uh, give it some uh, details 25 you shall make unto it a border of a hand breadth round about you shall make a golden crown to the border thereof round about and you shall make a border that's of a hand's breadth that as is is the works used for that uh that goes around that table uh we'll find out it's it's used to hold, hold the bread hold the show bread you shall make a golden crown that's the border that goes around it uh and it, it's it's to to give us some details of the at the top uh, 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 26 you shall make for it four rings of gold and put the rings in the corners that are in the four feet thereof so that's what you make your four rings once again that's the work of god in these rings uh there's of gold that's which is of god that they go around god did that it's his work they put the rings on the four corners these things that go around is the work of god on the corners that's where they turn see that's where they turn, in all places they turn, God says, they turn unto me. They are on the four feet thereof. That's the four corners. That's in the four places. That's where they go. Or that, you might say, that uh, when they turn, 27. Close by the border shall the rings be four places for the staves to bear the table. And close by the border, that's the edges, that's uh, there. Uh, shall the rings be uh, for the staves to bear the table and that's where the staves go through these rings and we'll find out that's that's what bears it up that's that which that's what it was made for that was its purpose to bear up the table lift it up carry it 28 you shall make the staves of acacia wood overlay them with gold that the table may be borne with them you shall take the staves uh, that's those that was that's represents these two that was hewn down uh, uh, and made into these things that would carry the table they are overlaid with gold that what belongs with the Lord anyway we'll find out it's it's his the, his from the beginning the first uh, and it's the law uh, 29 you shall make the dishes thereof and the pans thereof and the jars thereof and the bowls thereof wherewith to pour out of pure gold shall you make them and you shall make the dishes that's all the things that's going to be used the pans uh, all these things that uh, we'll find out these are the what's used to to boil in and, and we're going to get more into these as we we each one are made these jars are the vessels and the bowls are vessels that pour out we can they are used for the offerings they're used for uh, we'll find out it's all the law my friend it all has representation of the law every bit of it it all goes back to the law they're all pure gold and that's what they're made of each one the Lord has made uh, or cause to be made they're for his service and his and that's what they're for 30 you shall set upon the table show bread before me always you shall set the 
upon that table, the showbread. And we're going as we go through. We're going to get the what the bread, how the bread's made. We're going to the, what the bread actually represents is that which nourishes the uh, flesh, uh, that which it uh, is used as a similitude or a representation of that which nourishes the higher, because all these things have to be restored. All these things have to be put back into the place they've been taken, and somewhere. They are out there, and each one has to be restored into its proper place. We'll find out, then everything will be just fine. 31. And you shall make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work. Shall the candlestick be made, even its base and its shaft, its cups, its knobs, and its flowers shall be of one piece with it. You shall make a candlestick, not a candlestick. It's a lamp stand. It's a lamp not a candlestick of pure gold. The the lamp burns the oil. There's a little bit of difference. Uh, just a small difference. Of course, it's a huge difference. We'll find out of the, Lord, of the Lord because that's the anointing that's burning. We'll find out. It's kind of like a judgment. Uh, burning that anointing and it's for a light to everybody else we'll find out there's nobody above judgment says the Lord of beaten work shall the candlestick be made and that's just it it was beaten out it was uh, hammered out kind of figured out over a period of time and that's how it was made even its base that's what it stands on its shafts that's what it part that goes up its cups that's the part that holds the oil its knobs these little knobs are like uh, little f borders we'll find out they look like flowers uh, that a flower is a very special thing flowers are beautiful but they're just a weed uh, and it should be a one piece with it so it's all one piece. It's made out of one piece of a uh, hammered out work. It's all the work of God. We'll find out. It's made of gold. And that's the law. We get a this uh, something. There's always good and bad. There's something beautiful uh, can be deadly. Uh, something that smells good uh, can make you sick. So there's always some. There's always good and bad. Uh, and kind of that's what we get. The uh, the this oil that's burning. It, it's kind of got a little spice to it. It gives off a little odor. You might say, because that's so, you know, even with the bad things, there's a little bit of goodness in it. There's, because it's all the work of God in the end. He, uh, God says it doesn't matter how it is. He has the ability to change things. 32. There shall be six branches going out of the sides thereof. Three branches of, of the candlestick out of the one side thereof. And three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. So there shall be six branches going out of the sides thereof these things that are made plain six it's the work of man uh it going out it's made plain there's nothing really can be hidden of it and these three branches and three gives it to a little bit of complete makes it kind of completes the witness uh it's used as an example to make it strong kind of to twist it in uh this candlestick, once again, is not a candlestick. It's a lamp, an oil lamp. Out of the one side, that's those things that are made plain. Uh, that's what's burning that anointing oil. And three branches of the candlestick out of the other side thereof. These three, once again, it kind of completes that in witnessing. These branches, that which is uh, coming forth out of the tubes, you might say uh, stems these come off the main stock it's of the candlestick out of the other uh, side thereof 
of the candlestick out of the other side there. So these three branches, one on one side, three branches on the other side uh, of the main stick. So we have six branches. And once again, that's the work of man. These branches, these things that are coming forth. Uh, 33, three cups made like almond blossoms in one branch and a knop and a flower and three cups made like almond blossoms in the other branch a knop and a flower so for six branches going out of the candlesticks so on one side we have these three cups made like almond blossoms almond blossom is something that opens up early comes forth early uh, uh, in a sense to to show the beginning uh, on the one branch, a, a knop and a flower. That's a the, the knop is going to be a border made looks like a flower, and a cup. So you, you got a a a knop which looks like a flower and a cup that looks like an almond blossom. One on each stem, on on both sides of the the lamp stand on the one on each of the six branches that go out of the lamp stand the you know the those uh and you know that's kind of what we get is something that that come forth early uh to uh, make known you might say to represent uh that pleasant uhness of the Lord that you know that has that little bit of uh judgment in it you might say and that's kind of what contains it it's a like a, a little uh, wetness we'll find out it represents something else a greater thing of the whole 34 and in the candlestick four cups made like almond blossoms the knops thereof and the flowers thereof and in the candlestick, these four cups. So there's going to be four other cups, and that's what contains these these uh, that which comes forth early. Uh, this, these borders that, that uh, of the flowers, where the cup sits on. So it's a ten in total, and we'll find out. That's that's a coincidence because that's how many laws there are. Um, we might find out that's kind of what's burning that gives that example uh, in the overall understanding of it. It's the judgment of God. That's part of it all, my friends. You know, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, and it just depends on how you're looking at it and from where you're standing, just how beautiful and wonderful things are. Uh, the Lord's not... Uh, interested that anybody should suffer in this world we'll find out a lot of times we bring that upon ourselves uh, one way or another simply a lot of times by listening to others and not listening to the Lord to give you a little common sense from the beginning he put the law in your heart and we should have all these things still in the earth to give us a little reminder that that's who did it in the first place and he's uh, 35 and a knop under the two branches of one piece with it, and a knop under the two branches of one piece with it, and a knop under two branches of one piece with it for the six branches going out of the candlestick. And a knop, once again, that's that little border uh, that goes around two, two of the branches, and we can witness those two branches once again. Uh, it's of one piece with it. It's all made of one piece. The whole work is of one piece and a knop under the two branches And we're going to see we're going to repeat this three times as we go around the lamp uh, For these six branches uh, Three sets two knops each and it that kind of completes it uh, The witness of these branches as we'll find out. It's all made of one piece uh, for the six branches that go out of the candlestick and these six branches are the work of man that goes out of the lampstand, that which is holding all of it. It's all one piece. Thirty-six, their knobs, their branches, shall be of one piece with it. The whole of it 
one beaten work of pure gold. Their knobs, their branches, their borders, this is what's coming out, that, all of it, everything, it's all one piece. One piece. That means they, it was hammered out, beaten out of one piece of gold, one piece of pure gold. It's a beaten work, it's hammered out, it's, you know, and it, it finally it all comes out to the, the one thing. And, and of course, we all have a different perspective of things. Mine, it comes out simply to be out of Godson, out of 37. You shall make the lamps thereof seven, and they shall light the lamps thereof to, to give light over against it. You shall make the lamps thereof seven. These lamps, each there's seven of these lamps in total, seven because that kind of perfects it. Uh, it's to give light over against it, to give light, to give some understanding uh, as a witness as well against it. We'll find out the Lord give Moses the law. The, it come down as well to the elders. Then we'll find out right down to everybody else, everybody going up the other way. Got a little different perspective, a little finer tuning, a little more understanding to go with it. And it's something that is, is constantly before the Lord. That was the purpose of it in the first place. 38. And the tongs thereof and the snuff dishes thereof shall be of pure gold. These tongs, that's a, like a, uh, just like tongs are today we use. They grab the coal that would come out sometime in, with these snuff dishes. Uh, the snuff dishes are like an ash box. It carrying out all that which is being consumed, that which has been offered up before the Lord. Uh, it's just what's left there's a little residue that's going to be taken and thrown out but the tongs were used to, to get the live coals that which was still glowing these coals uh, that would be left in that box and put them back into the altar uh, all of it made of pure gold that which belongs to God 39 of one talent of pure gold shall it be made with all these vessels of one talent. That's a round of gold. A talent is a round. Of course, it was a weight that's determined at that point, but it was a round of gold, and that kind of like a, a symbolism of that which is going around. That's the pure gold. It's that which belongs to God. And that's what, it's, it's what these vessels are made of. Each one, because we'll find out, each one has a representation. It all goes back to the law the Lord gave us from the beginning. And it all represents these things that, that God made from the beginning to give us to represent those things. So sooner or later, though, it all wound up getting lost as things lose their value. Things don't have the meaning. Nobody left to explain things or make these things known and you get further and further away and the less and less they mean but we'll find out uh, it all comes through a restoration as in the as they go out they have to get sooner or later to the border or the other side and it returns things come back these things and it's really what it's all about returning to the Lord that which belongs to the Lord those things from the beginning 40 and see that you make them after their pattern which has been shown you in the mount so Moses was as we'll see we're going to get into a fairly lengthy explanation of, of these things that are going to be used as to service uh, is in services of the Lord uh, all of them having the representation in the beginning so that we could remember uh, the agreement really uh, and it was to help out, to give a little more understanding as we're going to, uh, we'll see, yet begin another journey, always beginning new journeys. And this journey uh, will take us across a many thousand years. We're going to move forward to Exodus chapter 26, turn and return.